What is up guys, this is Pete and welcome back to the Carrot Poker Podcast. This is episode number 68 and we're going to be talking about a new product that I have come up with called Pio vs Population. We're not just going to be using this episode to sell this product, although admittedly that is of course what I want to do, but I want to teach you guys a little bit about how to use a solver properly, how to get the most out of solvers such as Pio Solver or Poker Snowy or whatever it happens to be. Um, and how to basically not fall into the common traps that poker students fall into all the time when they are trying to figure out how to get their head around this solver that they've just purchased for the first time. So right off the bat, I'll tell you a little bit about this product that I am promoting in this episode. Pio vs. Population is an e-magazine. It's not a book. It's a lot shorter. It's going to be 15 to 20 pages an episode, but plenty of meat within those pages. The idea is that we're going to look at a spot, a very common spot in No Limit Hold'em 6 Max Cash. The spot that I cover in episode 1 that I published a few days ago is being in position, button versus big blind on King, Queen, Jack, Rainbow. And the idea is to pick the spots that are misplayed the most commonly by the populations that you guys will encounter at the micro stakes, low stakes, mid stakes, all the way through basically until you reach very competent, balanced, expert players who have made a lot of money playing professionally and have basically ingrained GTO to a very high level of accuracy using solvers and stuff like that throughout their careers. So as long as your opponents aren't guys like that, which for most of you listening, I'm sure they're not, the population reads that you're going to see in Pio versus population that I'm going to use are going to be very on point for the regs that you play against every day. The idea is to take a spot, look at how Pio Solver would approach it as the button in this particular case, although we will be switching around from in position to out of position and throughout an array of different spots um, as we go the series but in episode one we're talking about button handling this king queen jack rainbow board how should he set up his range that sort of thing pio will tell us the gto solution from there what we're going to do is not just say okay very good that's the gto now we know how to play this spot what we're going to do from there is look at how the population would play it instead those differences between what the population is doing and what pio is doing basically show you how the population fails to play game theory optimal poker in that spot. And subsequently, it shows us where the gaps are, where the leaks are in the population's game. So we can actually take those differences between population and Pio, call them leaks, and then formulate a strategy as the big blind, as the other person here, the out of position, and work out how to exploit the button. I'm going to give you guys some tastes of other spots today in this podcast. I'm not going to spoil all of the exploits I recommend, fine details of the Pio solution that we cover in Pio versus Population episode one, because obviously I want you guys to pick that up for the discounted price. It's currently half price, £4.49 UK sterling. Very reasonably priced um, on sale because I want to just get this out there and have you guys take a look at it and let me know what you think and just I hope you guys like it. I don't want to, you know, only be charging people for books that are £30, £40, you know, training series, things like that. I want products out there that can if you just want to make a small investment but still get a lot out of it then you can do that too and it will hopefully get you to get to know my style my writing style and stuff like that if you haven't read Render's Manual 100 Hands or whatnot so that's kind of the idea behind it um so what what really happens in this magazine is that each episode will take this spot it'll break down two types of thing that are noteworthy about the pile solution to the spot so Pio will give us the game theory solution to the spot. And we are going to have observations on that, which are the more common things that we don't necessarily think the regs are going to get wrong. For example, when Pio gets a board, let's say, out of position, hijack versus button that's jack 10, 8, two-tone, it's very, very wet, it's very good for button's range. Pio is going to check very often there as the hijack. This is not the topic of the first episode of Pio versus Population, by the way, which is why I'm using it here. In this spot, Pio will check a lot. The regs, the average regs in the game will bet a bit too much, but we could say that when they check pocket fours there, when Pio checks pocket fours there and pocket fives and pocket sixes and doesn't really bluff with those hands at all, we could say that's just an observation because the regs in the game are going to follow that trend also. They're going to, for better or for worse, for whatever reason, get that right by not usually betting pocket fours on that board. However, we might then see that they're betting way too many of their made hands and their checking range is way too weak. And that we won't call an observation, but the fact that Pio is actually check raising instead of betting with something like a set there or a straight 
we would call a revelation. So the difference in pi over versus population between what I call observations and revelations is that observations are just things where we think they're pretty normal. Like a lot of decent, competent regs will be able to pick up these parts of a PIO strategy and apply them properly. So when we're talking about observations, we're really just trying to get ourselves acquainted with an element of the GTO solution. We're not actually expecting the population to go wrong or for that element to be particularly rarely found in the population or in any way really surprising. But nevertheless, it's good to have a few initial observations in these in these e-magazines because what we want to do is build a real familiarity with the spot and understand the more obvious stuff before we move on and look at the, the somewhat surprising elements of pile strategy in some spots, which are not surprising at all once you get your head around the game theory, but from a, a very black and white, you know, limited, restricted view, human standpoint, where we tend to think accidentally very exploitatively without even realizing some of them actually are very counterintuitive. And in that spot with the Jack 10 8 flop, where out of position is checking to the button, I think it's going to be counterintuitive for a lot of people to go for check raises with their good hands, to check raise bluff draws instead of betting them. The reason for this in GTO is that we want a high checking frequency in a board that favors our opponent. And when we don't have the positional advantage, basically our EV in this spot as the hijack opener or middle position opener, whatever you want to call it, against the button is very low compared with what it could be um, if we were in position on a better board texture. And that's why Pio on that board is going to want to check a lot of his hands. But the average reg is going to check a much weaker range of that. He's going to miss these check raises. He's going to miss these check calls with certain hands. And he's going to be betting them all instead. And these will be decent hands, strong hands, good draws. Which will, which will mean that when the reg does check that flop, he's very, very often just check folding some bad part of his range, such as undercards to the board or some ace high or an under pair or something like that. And it's going to mean that what we can do as the in position player now flipping the coin here is that we can bet at a very high frequency and expect a lot of folds from the out-of-position player. Pio won't give us those folds because he's check-raising us a ton with a polarized range with draws with good value hands and things like that to protect the fact that his checking range is big there and he needs to check a lot of combos to survive given the low EV for out-of-position in that spot. So hopefully that makes sense. That's kind of like where we're going with this series, Pio versus Population. Um, we're seeing the somewhat more surprising elements of a strategy and then we're formulating ways to exploit as the other player. So we're looking at what the population would do wrong, what they're not doing that Pio is doing, and then we look at how we can take advantage of those deficiencies and those lacks of strategic awareness in the population's game. Someone asked me a good question last night, actually, while I was streaming. Um, for Pokestar School. If you want to check that out, by the way, it is every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. UK time. And basically, he said to me, this person, which population are you talking about? Like, are you talking about like 5 and L, 25 and L, full ring, six max? And I just said, well, the leaks that I'm actually picking out in Pio versus Population in this strategy magazine are not going to be leaks that only exist at say 5 and L and you know are mostly eradicated as we move up through the stakes and start encountering more competent opposition. As we move up through the stakes people do get better. This is true. But there are certain leaks that come from what I just described to you guys as the revelations, right? Which are widespread even as you move up throughout lots of stakes and even as you play 100 NL, 200 NL, stuff like that. Trust me, these leaks do exist. I've coached these stakes. I've played these stakes for many, many years. I see them all the time. I was playing 100 NL last night and I basically noted them balances in many spots and jotted them down as situations I would consider in a short list for future episodes of Pio versus Population. So the leaks that I'm talking about actually exist all through the stakes. I'm very careful not to pick something like folds big blind 65% small blind open. Being really nitty like that in position as the big blind is more of a leak that you will see at like 5 NL or 10 NL than 100 NL. But we're not talking about, you know, pre-flop things, simple things like that, that micro stakes populations get wrong, but small stakes populations get right. We're talking about stuff that all regs get wrong unless they're very, very, very good, like some of the best players in the games. And Pio helps us see what those things are. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit more now about the process of using a solver in general and how people sort of get it wrong and what the pitfalls are. 
by far the biggest mistake I see from students using Pyo is that they'll go away, download it. A few days later, we'll have a lesson. They'll be like, this Pyo thing's great, only I'm overwhelmed. What I've done is I've printed out 75 charts of different board textures, or I've run a sim overnight that analyzed the EV of both players on 300 different board textures. Okay, the problem I have with analyzing hundreds of different board textures and looking at the EV is that that EV is not useful to you. It's calculated in a situation we call equilibrium. And in equilibrium, what's happening is that both players have reached this Nash equilibrium through perfect play. Because neither player can adjust again without losing EV, there is no improvement that can be made by either player. We have reached a stalemate. We do not play poker, thank God, in a situation where we're in a stalemate of equilibrium. So when you look at EV there, what you're seeing is the, the sort of accumulation of many, many, many trials of both players trying different strategies until they settle on one, and you're seeing the EV of that final Nash equilibrium strategy. Now, one EV is arbitrary anyway, and it's affected by so many exploitative and human things that actually happen and choices that people make. Two, I just don't think that it's going to be useful for you to even just look at what someone's EV is and then copy the Pio strategy based on that. Copying Pio is a horrible thing to do because what you're actually doing there is you're assuming that there is no adjustment for you to make just because Pio couldn't make one because he derived at Nash equilibrium when he makes the strategy. That is a huge misconception and a huge mistake. So I say to students who have printed out 75 range charts and put them up in the wall looking at optimal strategies, just take them off the wall, tear them up, maybe set them on fire, but failing that more safely, put them in the bin. Because this is not how you're going to get the most out of your solver. What the solver is, is a way of seeing what very, very good players, i.e. perfect poker robots, would do against one another. Your job when you look at that is to see that blueprint of what the equilibrium looks like and then decide why that's not how your games play because it's not. In some spots, you might get semi-close to this equilibrium accidentally just through human conventions and stuff like that, but these spots are a minority. In the vast majority of spots, you're going to see regs misplay their ranges, not defend their checking ranges, not stab enough with the right type of hands as bluffs, not balance their bluffing range so that it contains bluffs that don't have obvious redraws, not use blockers in the right way, call with hands based on their showdown value rather than their blockers, which are actually lower EV. The list goes on to infinity, honestly. I could go on all day about this. So your job with the solver is exactly what we're doing in Pio versus Population Episode 1 and beyond. We are looking at why the reality is different from the theory and how we can take advantage of that. The theory is excellent as a roadmap to seeing what what would happen in a post-apocalyptic poker world where everyone was a god of the game. Thankfully, we do not live in anything close to that, and we never will, not in our lifetimes at least, I hope, guys, live in anything close to that. So when you get the solver, look at what they're doing wrong, look at the little revelations, as I call them, little finesses of the, of the situation. Oh, look, that hand is a bluff. It doesn't look like it should be. Why is it being bluffed? Oh, it has these blockers. It gains this protection. You can start to figure it out, but most people can't figure out why Pio does what it does because they don't have the level of experience that I have or another very experienced player or coach would have. And for that reason, this is my, basically my gap in the market is to say, well, look, here we have someone that can show you exactly why the solver is choosing everything it's choosing to do. Because let's face it, when we look at a Pio solution to a spot or a GTO plus solution to a spot or whatever, we look at poker snowy's ranges or whatever we look at we are not necessarily as aspiring poker players as people who are in an earlier stage of their journey we're not necessarily understanding exactly why things are being done we can memorize a chart but if we don't understand the logic to it we have no hope of applying that same overarching concept in a similar spot and that's a big mistake so I'm going to leave it there for today. I just wanted to make a short episode explaining how to use a solver properly, why I've embarked on this project, Pio versus Population. And yeah, I'll finish off by talking a little bit about how to get the product. It is on sale at carrotcorner.com. So you want to go there at the top. One of my menus is now Pio versus Population. You can click that and then there's various go to store buttons. If you click the go to store button on my site, it will take you to a very secure store where you can see all of my products. You can buy them straight away have the PDF of them sent instantly to you. It's your own PDF with a stamp on it, which 
you know prevents you from spreading it to other people it has your email address on every page and things like that i hope if that's part's worked whatever you know guys i'm still in noob to this marketing stuff doing my best here but um we'll see what happens right so pick that up and i'd love to hear what you guys think of it because it is a new project like you guys are the heart and soul of what i do the only reason i make training products is because you guys are buying them reading them and giving me positive feedback and that encourages me to make more i've already had some positive feedback in the few days that pio versus population episode one has been out or maybe i should call it issue one since the magazine spent some time the other day being like what are magazines called they're not called episodes what are they issues been a long time since i've bought a paper magazine you know anyway i digress so go to carrotcorner.com click power versus population head over to the store head over to the store on any link in the site at all it'll take you to the same place pick that up read it half price 449 right now for some very good secrets about how to play a certain texture you can infer other things about other textures not only will this help you understand a spot in game this will teach you better how to use a solver so if you have pile solver downloaded on your computer and you sort of put it away in a box and was like okay i'll look at that when i'm older i'll look at that when i'm a better player whatever dig it back out because this magazine is going to help you understand how to use that insanely powerful bit of program to a very high degree of competency um, it's not just that you'll understand how to beat regs but you'll understand how to do your own research by using this as well and i think that is really invaluable so i'm going to wrap up there i'll let you guys email me admin at carrot corner if you've got any questions at all as always my coaching is available on my website there you'll see it as well i'm still taking on students shoot me an email if you're interested in signing up for coaching i've got a little form on there that you can complete podcast is going to be back i've got a few exciting guests lined up please stay tuned and thank you so much for being a fan of this podcast over 68 episodes i'd love to hear what you think about this pile versus population episode one if you do buy it because it will encourage me to make more episodes and it will help me decide how to what direction to send the magazine in as we go forward and by the word magazine don't be put off to thinking this is the light read this is a very in-depth strategic um kind of thing much on the same level as my book 100 hands or you know anything that goes into the game theory of the game all right guys see you in the next episode and thank you very much for watching bye bye for now